Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, Lord, asking that you just be with us, Father, that you would just open our hearts and open our spirits and let us receive your words. And Father God, we hear, don't hear only your words, Father. We need you, Lord. We need to be strengthened by your words. We need to be strengthened in this wicked world that we live in and in all this darkness that we're surrounded by, Father God. So we need your words and we need to remember that you live in us and that we have the power to go out there into this world of darkness. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your mercy, your love, and your grace. Thank you for giving these things to us, Lord. And we pray now that we can just, in return, just to be pleasing to your eyes, learn your words, and to walk in the Spirit, Lord. We want to please you, Father, for all the things you've done for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to be in Song of Solomon, chapter 5. Solomon's going to be speaking in verse 1. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat. O friends, drink, yea, drink abundantly, O beloved. He's saying he has, he has enjoyed his first night with her. We're at the, the honeymoon night. They just finished the honeymoon night. When two get married, their life changes because the two become one now. That's what the Bible says. We're one. We no longer live the way we want to live, we live the way our spouse, what pleases her and pleases us, and she does the same. Remember in the book, it's a love story. From the very beginning, this is a love story, and I've told you already that uh, it's a love story between Jesus and, his, and us. So Solomon, the type of Jesus, his wife, is, uh, is us. And it's just a love story. Uh, the, the Lord has shown how much love we should have for him and how much he loves us. So as I'm reading them, it's Solomon and his wife. But just keep in mind, this is the Lord speaking to us. Remember, at the beginning of the teaching, I, the Lord says in the New Testament, he says, everything in the Old Testament is about me. So when you're reading the Old Testament and you don't see Jesus in it, and then you ain't got it. Okay. Now, like I said at the beginning, also, you have a lot of books that are on the Song of Solomon. And, and I'm not up here to say I'm perfect, but most of them are misinterpreting what, what the book is about. You know, it is about us and the Lord, but these, these books that you can buy, they don't even show the Lord in it. I mean, that's why I say read the Bible. Read the book. You don't need to buy books written by men. Read the Bible that was written by the Holy Spirit, amen? amen? By the Lord himself. You know, our Lord blesses us. He blesses us, you know. Sex and marriage is not sin. You know, the world has taken sin and made it look ugly, all right? But in God's eyes, which we've seen in these other chapters, he even shows the man. He tells, he tells us how to love our wife how to be emotional with her, and also how to be physical with her. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not if you look at it, at it in the spirit. Amen? Outside of marriage, <clears throat> excuse me, sex outside of marriage, yes, sinful. He hates it. He hates sin. But nowadays, of course, sex before marriage is nothing means absolutely nothing and that's how far this world that's how far we have gotten away from the Lord at one time even the lost people knew okay sex before marriage that's not right but now that's gone sex before marriage is nothing it's just another day by day thing that people do and it doesn't bother them in those days you committed adultery you were stoned to death. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
I say amen to that. Because it's a sin. In God's eyes, it's a sin. Just like the, 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 uh, the woman they brought, the, the priest and all, they brought that woman to Jesus. They caught her in adultery, and they wanted to stone her to death. Well, that's what they did back then. They would stone you, a woman, that way. Now, let me say this before I go any further. We have a lot of young women out there that are messed up. They're messed up. The way Solomon speaks to her here, you get a guy that speaks to a woman, a young woman that way now, oh, he's got her in his hand. Because women are very emotional. They're very emotional. Anything the guy says, oh. Women, especially young women, when you hear that, when a guy's talking to you all sweet and you're this and you're that and la, 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 uh, it's the devil behind that, man, behind that guy telling him what to say. Y'all hear me? I, I mean, women just fall for that. And that's partly because uh, they might read book, romance books or they might see a, a romance movie on, on the TV or the movies. Uh, they fall to this. and It's just a known fact. Women are very emotional. A lost boy, a lost boy will tell a young girl anything. He'll tell her anything for one reason. That's it. And the women fall to it. Look at Eve. Adam and Eve, look at Eve. Whoa. God's not going to do this to you. He's, I mean, he wasn't talking to her like, hey. No, don't, uh, blah, blah, no. The devil came to her all sweet and innocent. Oh, God's not going to kill you. You can eat of the fruit. It's okay. He fell to it. She fell to it. And this was from the devil, the serpent. And she fell to it. So, the, so whatever's talking to her, it doesn't have to look pretty or a guy don't have to be good looking. If he's saying the right words at the right time, that's enough for a woman. Y'all hear me? This is why the Lord has made the husband the head of the house. Because we're not like the women. And you're thinking, boy, Jesse, <laughs> you're coming down on the women. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. The scriptures are. The Lord says women are gullible. He says it in, in 1 Peter 3, 7. Well, it doesn't say it there, but in, in verse Peter 3, 7. It says that the woman is the weaker vessel. She's the weaker vessel. Does he mean physically strong, weak? No. I know some women that are stronger than men. And it sure don't mean spiritually because I see a lot more spiritual women than I do men. He's talking, he's talking about emotions. They're easy to get to. Also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, now the verses above these verses are speaking about wolves and wicked people and what they want to do. In verse 6, For of this sort, of this sort of people, are they which creep into houses and lead captivity silly women laden with sin, led away with their diverse lusts, even learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. This is the women. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying this. The Lord is saying this. And a good example, like I said, is Eve. Is Eve. Now, don't get this mixed up. The Lord loves men and women the same. The same. His mercy, his grace, his love, his salvation, everything is the same, man and woman. But he made us the head of the house because of this. Not because we were better than women. We're not better than women. In God's eyes, we're all equal. Okay, y'all remember that. And men, when you're, if you're listening to me, doesn't mean you're better than your wife, because we're not. They have a weakness, and he's made us man enough to protect her from, from someone come knocking on your door. They have another gospel. 
That's why you're there to protect her. Just like Eve believed the devil, Adam should have been there to protect Eve and say, hey, no. But, a, but Adam fell right with her. The devil didn't fool Adam. He fooled Eve. And Eve gave the fruit to Adam, and he ate of it also. But he knew he shouldn't have done that. So Adam's not off the hook. But the devil deceived Eve, not Adam. Now, you don't hear this kind of preaching in the church. You don't hear this preaching in the church. A preacher get up, up, there, up there in the pulpit and say, women, you're the weaker vessel. You're gullible. What do you think the next Sunday's going to be? He ain't going to have no women in there. Y'all hear me? Speaking the word of God, the truth, offends people. It, it offends people. It steps on their toes. But that's okay. Because we're not there yet. As long as he's stepping on my toes, thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me. I thank the Lord for showing me when I'm doing wrong. That's what his words are for. I'm not going to get a, a mad at him. He's just trying to show me to be a better person. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> the church barely teaches sex before marriage is wrong. The church just about doesn't even say nothing about that. The church needs to teach young women how important sex is in God's eyes. Like I've said before, the blood covenant, when a young girl has sex for the first time, she bleeds. And it's called a hymen. The doctors don't know why the hymen is there in a woman. I know. God told me. God put it there for when she does the first time have sex, the first time with a man, a boy, that's a blood covenant between her and that boy. A blood covenant. And you know how important a blood covenant is to the Lord? Do they teach this in the church? They don't teach young women this in the church, but it's in the Bible. I'll teach it. I'll teach it. The Lord shows it to me. I will teach it. Amen. And it says, I have drunk my wine with my milk. Now, this is one place. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know what that means. And since I don't know what it means, I can't say anything about that, that statement in there. The Lord didn't show me and I didn't get it, so I'm not going to say nothing about it because I, I don't know what he meant by that. Now, the honeymoon, as we know, we know the honeymoon doesn't last forever. You know, it just doesn't last forever. And starting at verse 2, Some time has gone by on verse 2. We read in verse 1, but now verse 2, some time has gone by. And like I said, the honeymoon doesn't last forever. But verse 2, she speaks. I sleep, but my heart walketh, waketh I me. Mean. It is the voice of my beloved, which we're, we know she's talking about him, remember, beloved, that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. Now remember the marriage, she had a dream. No, this was before the marriage, she had a dream. Back in chapter 3, verse 1, she had a dream and she, she lost him. Now she has another dream. And the dream is what is in our heart. Okay? This is another dream. He's still calling her his love. And he says, my undefiled, meaning she's still true to him only. To him only. She's never had sex with anybody else. She was a virgin when they got married, and she still is. And he's tr she is true to him. She hears a knocking, and he says that he's been out in the field checking on the sheep. We get, and I get that from his hair being wet from the dew of the night. So, okay. And then her reply on verse 3, I have put off my coat. Now she's, well, let me read it first. I have put off my coat. How should I put it on? I have washed my feet. How should I defile them? What she's doing is rejecting them. He's wanting to come in. 
the room of this is a dream. He's wanting to come in and have sex again. But now she's saying, pretty much what she's saying in today's language, I have a headache. She's saying, hey man, I already took off my clothes. I, you know, I, I've washed my feet, blah, blah, blah. You know, all these excuses you can hear from women sometimes. That's what she's saying. I have a headache. <laughs> but this, spiritually, this is us saying many times to the Lord. Us. She's doing what we do spiritually. Lord, I don't have time to read the word tonight. Y'all hear me? Lord, I'm too busy. I, I, I can't sit down and, and read the word. I can't read the Bible tonight. Oh, I'm tired. Blah, blah. You know. We do the same thing and spiritually. We're doing the same thing that she's doing to him. Oh, Lord, I got a headache. Y'all hear me? Don't raise your hands, but tell me who's never done that before. Don't raise your hands. Again, like us, spiritually, we get saved. And most, most of us get excited. When we first get saved, we get all excited. But then we kind of just start coasting in our Christian walk with the Lord. We just start coasting. After a little while, the, the excitement and everything just wears off. Let me say this. I got born again when I was 25. I'm 63, and I'm still excited. So I'm, if, if anything, I'm even more excited now that I'm living for the Lord. Amen. Because I read his words. I study his words. I see how great, how beautiful my God is to me. Y'all understand that? Once once you can get in that frame of mind where you're you're not reading the Bible, you're studying the Bible, and you see how much the Lord loves you, you can't you 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 want to read it every night. Oh, this is the this is a beautiful book. I need to read it every night. Amen. Amen. <sighs> At least that's the way I am. Okay. The the Lord is always ready for us to be in him the lord is john chapter 15 verse 4 5 and 7 jesus says abide in me and i in you verse 5 he that abideth in me and i in him verse 7 if ye abide in me my words abide in you the Lord, that's what kind of closeness the, war, the Lord wants us to have with him. He wants us to be in him and him in us. Amen? Amen. That's, being, that's being close. That's intimate. That's being intimate with the Lord. Amen? Amen? The beginning of the marriage, she was head over heels for him. Head over heels. Now she's not, now she's not in the mood. It's not up to either spouse whether they want to have sex or not. It's not up to us. Wives, forget your headaches. Husbands, forget that you, you're too tired. You're just coming from work and that you're too tired. Forget that. The Lord says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 3 through 5, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and like Wise. Also, the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. You hear me? Wives, you don't have a right to say you have a headache if you're not in the mood. Now, if you really have a headache, then, then right. Amen? Mm -hmm. If you got a headache, then okay. But the Lord knows if you have one or not. You might fool your husband, but you're not going to fool the Lord. Mm -hmm. Number five, verse five, it says, Defraud ye not one another, except... It be with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontensity. Did y'all get that? Okay. One of the reasons for turning one or the other down is because you want to fast. You want to pray. You want to be in prayer. You, 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 some, something's on you and and you feel led to pray. And that's okay if you're praying. But the Lord says, but hey, as soon as you're finished, get back with it. That's what he's saying right here. Y'all hear me? This is what the verse is saying. As soon as you're finished fasting or praying, 
get back to satisfying your spouse. Because he says, because if you don't, then your spouse, either one, will be tempted when, devil, when the devil comes along to tempt you. Wives, you're not getting it at home? Oh, this guy said some nice things to me. Then he, that becomes the temptation. Husband, same thing. Well, the wife ain't giving it to me at home, and here's this pretty sexy woman. That's the way the devil tempts us. That's why husband and wife don't deny one another unless it's for fasting or prayer. Y'all hear me? If the husband's in the mood, wife, it's not your body anymore. And vice versa. Okay? That's where a lot of trouble starts in a marriage. A lot of it. Because one wants to say, eh, not tonight. No, the Lord said, hey, it's not your own body. If your spouse wants it, give it to him. That's what the Lord is saying. And he says, Jesse, man, come on. No, this is what the Lord is saying, amen? amen? Is this not what, did I say something wrong here? The verses say that, right? I'm just putting it in today's language, all right? Verse 4, my beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. He's having the forces, now remember, it's a dream. He's having the forces weigh in through the door. And in her heart, that's exciting her. That's what it's saying right here. That excites her that he's knocking the door down to get into her. Amen? <laughs> I mean, she's getting excitement out of that. In verse 6, open to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul felleth, felleth when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. He wanted to come in, and she wasn't ready. And then once he started to knock the door down, that excited her, and she, she was like, it put her back in the mood. So when she went to go open the door, he wasn't there. He was gone. And this is what happened to Israel when they kept rebelling against God. Do you know how many times... Israel rebelled against the Lord. Well, this is what happened to them. God told them in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. This is, he's talking about Israel. When you spread out your hands to me, I will hide my eyes from you. I've been there all the time. The Lord was there all the time. And Israel just kept rejecting. And right here he's saying, I hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make my prayers, I will not hear him. He said, when you pray to me, I'm not going to hear you. I'm not. You didn't want to walk with me? You didn't want to recognize me? I don't hear you. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. You want your prayers answered? Clean. Let the blood of, of Jesus wash you, cleanse you. Because Israel was acting that way, God said, I have nothing to do with you. And that's, that's pretty much what happened here. She was like rejecting them. And then when she was ready, he wasn't there. Y'all hear me? Y'all yeah. got this spiritually? Yeah. The Lord's not there to wait on you hand and foot. Oh, I'll read when I can. Uh I'll pray to you later. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. the, the Lord does not deserve that. Right. He died for our sins. He died for our sins. He had no sin. He died for our sin. Amen. So if you want to sin, if you want to be rebellious, not read your Bible, not pray, not walk in the Spirit, if you want to do that, if it's worth being separated from the Lord, I guess go ahead and do it. I don't want to be separated from my Lord. Right. I don't want to be separated from. I sin, but I, the Lord shows me my sin. I, re, I confess and repent. I just don't confess. I repent. You confess sins all day long. Unless you repent, it means absolutely nothing. Right. Y'all hear me? Her dream is starting to sound like the other dream she had. Where she thought... She, was, she, she had lost him. And she finds the watchman, like she did in another dream. In verse 7, the watchman that went about the city found me. They smoked me. They wounded me. 
the keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. Now the guards find her and they find her like they did in chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. They found her. But this time they beat her. This time they beat her and bruised her. They took the veil from her to add insult to her. They beat her. When last time they helped her, this time they beat her. Now, remember, this is a dream. Because it's a dream, she could be thinking in her dream, she feels guilty of the way she treated them. And that she needs to be treated this way. Okay, this is a dream. They didn't really beat her. But in her dream, she feels guilty about what she did. And she believes she's, she deserves what she gets. Y'all see, y'all, did y'all see that? <laughs> I know in my life, there are times I didn't listen to the Lord. There's times. And believe me, believe me, believe me, I have regretted it. If you love the Lord and you walk with the Lord, and when you allow the devil to come in just for a little while, just put that little wedge in there and you disobey the Lord, or you're not doing his will, you're not walking with him. I do, like I said, I do not like being separated from my God. And I regret when, when in real life, I regret when I do things like this. It's because I love the Lord so much. If it didn't bother me, if I didn't love the Lord so much, it probably wouldn't bother me. Oh, it's just a little sin. Uh, listen to me. In the Bible, there is no little sin. God sees sin as sin, period. Oh, it's just a little white lie. No, it's not. It's a black lie. There are no white lies. Verse 8. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick of love. Now, at the, end of a, uh, the, at the end of her dream, she repents of not wanting him. She's repentant of not wanting him. Something we ought to do, right? When we do stray away, backslide, we want to come back. We want to repent and say, oh, I need, I need my Lord. Right. Well, I need him. She says, I nearly died when I found that he left. That's what she was saying. And the woman of Jerusalem Speak back to her. In verse 9, they say, What is thy beloved more than other beloved? O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved more than other beloved? Then thou doest so charge us. What they're saying, the daughters of Jerusalem, what they're saying, what's so special about him? They're asking, what's so special about him? Why do we have to look for him? They tell her, you are so beautiful. You know, really? Why, I mean, why do you got to go through that? There's many men out there. You're so beautiful. Oh, that sounds like the devil. Y'all hear me? Sounds like, oh, why are, you, why are you living for him? Look at all this stuff I have to offer you. Look how beautiful it is. And believe me, sin is very beautiful. Listen to me. Sin is very beautiful. Eve, Eve looked at that shiny fruit. Oh, that was, that's nice. That's a pretty fruit. Sin is beautiful. Las Vegas. Beautiful place to go. All those lights. It's nothing but Sin City. It's nothing, it's run by the devil. Period. That's it. But sin is beautiful. Y'all hear me. To little kids, sin is beautiful. Santa Claus, Santa Claus. Oh, uh, wait a minute. This is Jesus' day, not Santa Claus. But he made, the, Satan made up a Santa Claus to take the little kid's attention away from the Lord. Y'all hear me? Sin is beautiful. And it's pleasant to the eyes. Don't fall to it. That's why we need to read the word of God. That's why we need the words. So we know and recognize sin when it comes our way. It's not a devil with horns. Ah, with a fork. That ain't the devil. There's no... They ain't nowhere near the devil. That's a world made up thing. The devil is beautiful. In fact, the devil was one of the most beautiful angels in heaven. 
Y'all hear me? I'm always losing my place. You know, people are always watching us. They are. Why does he love the Lord so much? He's always talking about the Lord and carrying his Bible. And, you know, they can't understand it. Just like these women here, they couldn't understand why she loved them so much. Y'all hear me? Now we're going to see her praise him again. Because they were always, they're always praising each other. But she had a bad dream. But now she's going to start praising him again. First time she did it was <clears throat> as a shepherd. She thought he was a shepherd. But now she's going to praise him as her king. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Most of us knew Jesus as a shepherd. We knew he was called a shepherd. As, as someone who watches over us, John 10, 11. Jesus that watches over us. Our eyes began to open. We started to recognize him as king of kings, lord of lords. We started reading the Bible and we started realizing Jesus is not a weak man who died on the cross. Y'all hear me? That's the way some people look at him, that he was just a man who died on the cross. Oh, yeah, okay, there was Jesus, Jesus Christ. No, this man that died on the cross, that we... That physically looking at him, you think, oh, what a weak person. No. <laughs> He's king of kings, lord of lords. Amen? Amen. He is God. Amen? Amen? Amen. <laughs> we thought we had a shepherd. No, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, God. Yes. And Jesus is God in heaven. Jesus was a man on earth. But this man who died on earth was God in heaven. God did not die because God cannot die. But Jesus, the son of God, Jesus in the flesh, he had to be in the flesh because he had to give his blood for our sins. The wages of sin is death and he paid it, but he had to pay it with his blood. Right. <laughs> so what we think, what we have at first, we end up finding out by reading the words, oh my God, my Jesus is, my Jesus is creator of heaven and earth. He made all this. Everything you can see out there, as far as you can see, the stars, everything, Jesus made it. Amen? Amen. Our Lord made it. Yeah. These are good words. These are good words. And now she speaks to him in verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy, the cheapest among 10,000. Here she's describing <coughs> describing. Both his countenance as being white and ruddy. His greatness, that's what he's saying, when chief of my 10,000. <laughs> she loved him not only for who he was to her, but for his greatness, for his character. Because he was king. And back then, not like today, we have a president. We got a president, no matter if it's a Republican or Democrat, they get no respect. If they're Democrat, Republicans don't honor him. If he's a Republican, Democrats have no respect for him. But back then, if you're a king, you better respect him. You better honor him. Yeah. Speak against the king back then and see what happens. <laughs> I wish it was that way today. We got too many crybabies. She says he's one in a million. That's what she's saying. He's one in a million. Isn't it the way we looked at our Lord? That our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, he's priceless. Amen? Amen? He is priceless. You can, the devil can come up to me right now and pretty much did what he did to Jesus and say, hey, Jesse, see all that out there? All the world out there? You can have it all. I'll make it yours. I'll make you king of the world if you bow down and worship me, the devil. Nope. No way, Jose. No way. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. If Even if the devil was able to give me this, it's only temporary. We're only here for a temporary while. Mm -hmm. We're all going to live forever. It's either going to be in heaven or hell. Well, yeah, I'll enjoy what 
If I live to be 100, no, I'll enjoy to, until I'm 100 and then I die and go to hell. No, I'd rather live for the Lord Jesus Christ, even if it meant not having nothing like John the Baptist, to know I'm going to go to be with heaven, in heaven with the Lord. Amen? Amen. <laughs> now I'm going to read verses 11 through uh, 16. This is all compliments, okay? His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are brushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of those by the river of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the beryl. His belly is a bright ivory overlay with sapphire. His legs are as pillows of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Since I've been saying that the scriptures are speaking about Jesus our Lord, yeah. this is him. Yeah. This is the way she looks at him, and this is the way we look at him. He's, he's just beautiful. Yeah. He's awesome and beautiful. Amen? Yeah. And our Lord is. The white in verse 10 means he's pure, spotless, innocent. And he had to be to die for our sins. Just like in the Old Testament, how the lamb had to be spotless. Jesus had to be innocent and spotless. And that's how these, uh, she's describing him. Amen? Amen? We see that in her dream. She has lost her first love. She realizes that she needs him back, like I said. She needs him back, and she starts telling the women about the dream and how wonderful he is. This dream. How she looks at him now, after the dream. Sounds like us. Some of us, we backslide. We go into the world. Then we when we realize, like the prodigal son, when he left his father, he didn't want to be with his father anymore. He wanted to go into the world. And once he got there, he started feeding, feeding pigs because that's all he could do. Did the world take care of him? Oh, come to us. Yeah. The world has no mercy on us. None. And just like the prodigal son came back, that's how we are. When we fall away from the Lord, and in which I backslid, it's been a while back, but I did backslide once in my Christian life, and I was ready to come back to the Lord. I was ready. I didn't like it out there. I didn't like it. I was not happy. I was not happy. Being in the world did not make me happy. Right. Living for my Lord Jesus Christ, that's what makes me happy. Amen. Amen. Because everything is okay, we start to think we're doing pretty good on our own. And I've seen it. I've seen it. People don't go to the Lord that much. Oh, when everything, when things are bad and, and, the, and maybe the husband doesn't have a job and things are, are bad in, in the marriage or, or whatever, then this thing start, you, get, you get close to the Lord, right? Like they say, when someone's laying in bed sick, all they can see is up, okay? <laughs> well, once they get up or once this guy finds a job or, or the marriage is fixed or whatever, and everything's going good. They forgot what got them there. They forgot who healed their marriage. They forgot who gave him that job. They forgot who healed that person. They forgot all that. So now everything's okay. Now they can just do what they want. It's kind of her what she did. Everything was so good with her. And then she just got. Uh, she's just started coasting in her marriage. It got bad. And that's the way we are spiritually sometimes. Now in chapter 6, we're going to see how much 
the Lord loves us, okay? Women of Jerusalem are speaking here. In verse 1, Whither, whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? These women of Jerusalem have just heard him, heard her describe him as king and husband. And because she made him sound so great, they want to help her find him. Oh, well, if this is your husband, if this is your king, we will, yeah, we'll help you find him. How many of us know just how much God loves you? I mean, really know? Because if you really, really did, if you really did, you'd be walking in the Spirit 24-7. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday night or Tuesday night. You would walk with the Lord 24-7 if you knew how much He loves us. If you really knew. And this is what this, I really believe this is what, is, what the Lord is trying to show us. How much He loves us. This, I mean, The first time she saw Solomon, she fell in love. The first time she saw him. It was love at first sight. Same thing with Ruth and Boaz. As soon as Boaz saw Ruth, boom, he was in love. As soon as I found the Lord, as soon as I realized who Jesus Christ was, I fell in love with him. I fell in love with him. I really did. It's a bonus. It's a bonus that I'm going to heaven. That's just a bonus. Just knowing that my Lord, my Savior loves me, that's all I need. Right. He's going to let me go to heaven because of that. And I say, thank you, Lord. Right. But mainly, I love him because he first loved me. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why I like to witness about the Lord. I love talking about my Father, my Savior. I love talking about them. I do. And you ask my wife over there. Just about anywhere we go, somehow, some way, I'm going to put the Lord in there. Amen? Amen? I want people to know my father. He's my father. He's my father. And he's your father, too. And my father, which is your father, he likes it when you show him how much you love him. He likes that. It's pleasing to his eyes. Amen? So, I love witnessing. Now, verse 2. She speaks. My beloved has gone down into his garden, to the bed of spices, to feed in the gardens, to gather lilies. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. She really hasn't lost him. Remember, it was a dream. Mm -hmm. She really didn't lose him. This was a dream. Remember, this dream started in back in chapter 5, verse 2. He was in the field with his flock. This is where she knows he's at, feeding his flock. She needs to go with him to the fields to ask for forgiveness, for turning him away. Back in chapter 5, verse 2. This is what we do. Now, this was a dream, but this is what we do in real life. When we have done our Lord wrong, we go back to him. Say, Lord, please forgive me. You know, some of us have to ask for forgiveness every day. Some of us. Some of us can go days, days without having to ask for forgiveness. Do you know you can go days without sinning? I mean, some people think, oh, well, you know, we sin every day. No, we don't. We, I mean, we do, but we don't have to. We don't have to. We can go days without sinning. Now, as soon as she realized that, she went in the back and she went and, and, and repented of, for turning him away. She repented for turning him away. Solomon has seen her, and this is what he says. She's over there repenting for, what, for the dream, which didn't really happen. <laughs> but Solomon has seen her, and, he's, and he says, Remember, she has rejected him. 
In verse 4, thou art beautiful. This is Solomon talking to her. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tazar, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Was his reply to her, uh, I'm mad at you, get away from me? Husbands, is that what we do when our wife turns her, us down? Hmm? Don't, don't talk to me. Because we're mad. Or vice versa. Well, that's not what he's doing. She's told him her dream, and she's and he's telling her, Thou art beautiful. Amen? That's the way most of them would act. Uh, mad and everything, but he didn't react to that, that way. You know, it's hard for us men to, re to receive rejection. Okay? It's hard for us. I mean, when we're dating and we have to ask a woman out, it's hard for a man to ask a woman out because he, he don't want her to say no because <laughs> now he's embarrassed. This is, the way, this is why some of us are scared to go to God. When we've done him wrong, we think he's going to reject us. Oh, he can't forgive me for what I did last night. Or he can't forgive me. Y'all hear me? Guess who that? Guess who's telling you that in your little mind back here? The devil. Because the Lord says he's always ready to forgive if it's coming from the heart. If you're playing the game with him, forget it. But if it's coming from the heart, he's always ready to forgive us. Amen? Amen. After being rejected, what, what was Solomon's first words? After being rejected, in the dream that is, but his first words to her, you're beautiful. I think that would have been kind of hard for me to say. After being rejected, oh baby, you're beautiful. <laughs> but that's what our Lord does. Amen? After we've rejected him in whatever kind of way, whatever we, whether we rejected him, you know, there's many ways to reject the Lord. You can be, be embarrassed of him at work. You can be embarrassed of him at school. Or you can just be embarrassed of him out there in the world. Embarrassed of him. Oh, I don't want nobody out of I'm ashamed. But when we do that and we ask for the Lord to forgive us, he's ready to forgive us just like that. You are forgiven. That's how bad the Lord wants us. We can do all these stupidity things, these sinful things, listening to the devil, listening to the devil, and listening to the devil, and God's always ready to forgive us if it's coming from the heart. Amen? That's how good our God is. Is this what she was expecting? Oh, you're so beautiful. Mm. No, she wasn't expecting that, but that's what he gave her. Amen? He's telling her she's so beautiful as tight. Thazar, which was <clears throat> in the north of Jerusalem, which uh, was a beautiful city. Those of y'all who didn't know about Tarzar, but it's a, it's a beautiful city over there. What he was saying, <laughs> again, I mean, to me, I just got to repeat this because after what she's done, his first words are, you're so beautiful. God, and that's and that's why I love the Lord so much. Even though stupid me, and I call myself stupid whenever I sin, but stupid me, then I go to my Lord with my head down, Father, forgive me. And he's always, 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 because I, I don't do it unless it's from the heart, because he knows my heart. He knows your heart better than you know, than you know your heart. Amen. Terrible as... An army with banners. He's saying it's, it's, it's like being in battle and the other side outnumbers you 100 to 1. When you see that, your jaw just drops. You're outnumbered. <laughs> but he was ready to have her. He was ready to forgive her. He was ready to, to, to forgive, to, to protect her. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all see what I'm trying to say? Bottom line, we, we treat the Lord many times in our life. And it should be getting less and less as you grow. It should be getting less and less. But we fail him so many times. And he's always there to rescue us. I mean, we're outnumbered. I mean, we're like, oh, well, I'm so outnumbered. I mean, 
How's the Lord going to forgive me? But he's always there, always ready to forgive us. I, I mean, I, I repeat that over and over because that is, I have no words for that. Because of the way we treated him, he looks at us and says, I love you, my child. You're forgiven. Amen? Amen. Yes. God is good. Amen. Now, that's the way he's looking at her, and that's the way the Lord looks at us. When we see how beautiful the Lord is to us in these chapters, in all these verses I'm reading, when we see that, really, seriously, how can we turn our back on him? Oh, I don't have time to read today. Uh, I'm not going to church this morning. I'm too tired. Church is good, okay? Religion is not good, but church is good. Group of believers. Amen? Amen? This is a church. I don't have no title out there. I don't have no neon signs. I don't have anything. But church is a group of believers. This is church. So we want to go to church so we can hear about our Father and learn who our Father is because He is so good to us. So husbands, are we learning anything? How to love our wives? How to forgive them? Forgive them? Seven times 70, I believe it was, seven times 70. That's how much we need to forgive them. He, he didn't even, him, her turning him away, and it, like I say, it was a dream, but he was ready to forgive her. He was like, it didn't bother him. He just wanted her back. Amen? Now, as Christians, are we learning anything? Yes. One, we should be learning. God, I didn't know God loved me so much. I didn't know God loved me so much. You know what? I am going to start making <coughs> time for him. Regular time. Regular time. Just like I make time to eat physically every day. So I won't be weak. Well, okay, I'm going to make the same amount of time to eat spiritually. The words of God. So I won't be weak spiritually. Amen. We need to make reading the Bible, reading the words of God, a daily thing. Something that should become a habit to us. Something that we want to do. Not that... I guess I'll go read the Bible. No, if you're going to do it that way, don't read it. Because then you're not going to do any, get anything out of it. No, this teaching, this, this book, Song of Solomon, should, after, after I finish, we should have a joy in our heart. And, and it's like, well, hurry up, because i got, I got to go read the Word. Amen? Amen. But so-and-so is on tonight. Oh, I'm not watching that. I'm going to go read the Word of God. You know how bad the TV is? Bad. TV, that's, TV is sin when you're allowed to take your time away from the Lord. Right. Y'all hear me? TV is good. Weather channel, that's good. Oh, a storm's coming. A hurricane. That's good I can turn on the TV and see where it's at and when it's going to get here. I mean, the TV's got some good things on it. Got some good Christian stations. It's got some bad Christian stations too, but... Some of them are good. There's a lot of wolves on the Christian stations. I'm not going to get into that, though. But TV can be good. But the TV is one of the best weapons, one of the best tools that the devil uses on us. Right. I hope y'all hearing me. Because if you watch a lot of TV, instead of reading a lot of the words of God, don't blame God whatever happens in your life. Y'all hear me? I keep saying y'all hear me. I keep saying it because I want you to hear it like I hear it. I receive it. I hear it and I take it in. I don't let it go in this ear and out this ear. So I guess that's why I say, do you hear me? But we'll start with the rest of chapter 6 next week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so, so much for your love. You are showing your love to us in a, in a beautiful, beautiful way, Father God. Thank you. 
We don't even deserve it. And we know we don't deserve it. But we accept it only because you're giving it to us. You're willing to give it to us. And we take it as an honor and a, as a privilege to receive your love, Father God. Thank you so much for speaking to us tonight. And Lord, if there's a tomorrow, I pray that we all here will wake up with our eyes on you, ready to go out there into the wicked world, lost wicked world, with the power of the Holy Spirit, and be pleasing to your eyes. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.